Hey, what's up, guys? It's Apollo Uchiha here, back with another part of what if Naruto was separated from his family. And today is going to be a double upload, so stay tuned for that. And if you haven't, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And without further ado, let's continue our story. Uzushio Gakure Academy, Monday. It was Monday again. It was a new week for school and the official start of the new semester. Kira welcomed her students as the classroom got filled. When the final student arrived, she called for the class attention. Alright, today we have seven new students that will be joining our class. They are from Otogakure. Since the village is still new and are still developing, they will be the first batch of students from their village that will study here. It's like a foreign student going to another village thing. They are like to be called Sabuko siblings. Let us give them a warm welcome and make sure they feel comfortable with us," Kira said as she motioned for the said seven students to stand up. Please introduce yourselves. The only female in the group was the first one to speak. Hello. Good morning. I am Suchikin. She caught Naruto's eye and blushed crimson red. Nata, Shion, Tamari, and Yakumo noticed this and glared at the girl. Tayuya simply rolled her eyes as she felt the killing intent directed to Kin by the four. Next was the boy who had long spiky hair. Hello, my name is Abumi Zaku. Good morning everyone, I am Kinuta Dosu. The one with the bandages all over his face except his left eye said while bowing. I am Jirobo, I do not have a family name. The fat one said, I'm Kirimaru. Like Jirobo, I also don't have a family name. The tall one said, I'm Sekon, said the silver-haired guy. And I am Ukon, said the one other besides him. The two then stood with their backs on each other and said, and together we are the awesome silver twins. They both said while doing the peace sign, making the other sweat drop. Kira simply chuckled at the two. Do twins always say the same things? Naruto wondered as he remembered his own siblings. Yes, they do, Krama said. For the sake of new students, Kira also had the rest of the class introduce themselves. After the introduction was made, the class began with the morning exercises. They were taught by the former priestess Miroku in history and then by Kira again in Funjutsu. They were still mastering writing the correct strokes for basic symbols in ceilings. Tuesday, Weapon Mastery Grade 1 class. Good afternoon class, I am Kyoki. I will be your sensei in this subject. Let us begin with introducing ourselves. I'll go first. I am Uzumaki Kyoki. I am masters of all weapons. I started teaching in the academy three months after the Iwakumo Kiri attack. My favorite weapon is the Naginata. Like most Uzumakis, my main affinity is water while my second is lightning. My goal is of now is for you to become masters of weapons of various sorts. Kyoki then began to call everyone and hand them stand in front and introduce themselves. After the introduction, she began with the lessons. A weapon is an important tool for a ninja. It could greatly help someone a lot when he or she gets in a tight situation and cannot use chakra at the moment. As stated in our law, civilians are also taught to fight and master their own chosen kinds of weapons. For us shinobis, we have the advantages to enhance these weapons by adding chakra. But for now, we will simply be with getting familiar with each kind of weapon. You will be taught the apply of chakra on all of your weapons in the next year. Once you are able to wield all even at an adaptive level, you will be prompted to choose two weapons that you will use in your shinobi life. A primary weapon and that you should master of and a secondary weapon you also better with the other weapons. While learning your chosen weapon, you will of course train with basics of kunai, melee weapons and the shurikens or throwing stars for the thrown ones. Kunai also can be used for throwing. The last for the three basic weapons throwing is the senbon needles. Senbon needles are usually used for disabling enemies for the hidden locations. They are usually used by medic nymphs but even can be deadly when a known medic has great proficiency with it. Before I allow you to have your hands on these weapons, we are going to watch your tuning demonstrates their own unique battle styles and play with their chosen weapons. The entrance of their dojo then opened and in came about 20 tunings. Among them were Naruto's twin siblings. Miho and Mio will be the first pair to demonstrate the battle style 
and their favorite weapons. For Miho, she is a master of the war fans, while Mio is a master of the Tonfa. Miho's main affinities are water and wind. She has the ice release. Mio's main affinities are fire and wind. He has the blaze release. Mio and Miho, please begin. The twins then bowed and got to the middle and bowed to each other again. They begin their dance with their backs on each other. First, they demonstrated the katas step by step and then continues after. After the kata, the twins created water clones and ordered them to attack. The clones outnumbered them 20 to 1. On the first wave, the twins defended themselves with just using their weapons by deflecting and countering. Miho's was the one deflecting the attack with her fans and directing them to her twins, making him the one to kill the opponent. Sometimes Mio will do the same, allowing Miho to slash at the enemies with her fans, killing them off. After defeating the clones, they created more and this time they were outnumbered 30 to 1. Miho raised her fan in a defensive stance while Mio went on and ran offensive stances. As the clones gathered around them on a circle, Miho channeled her chakra and coated her fans with wind while Mio coated his tonfas with fire. The clones then started throwing weapons at them. Miho moved her arms and motioned her arms in a circle. Futon, wind dome. The wind dome caused the thrown weapons at them to bounce back in enemy's direction. Now twin were directing the weapons they sent to them at their backs twice with the force they threw, dispelling some of the clones that got hit while the wind dome was still active. Mio then thrust his tone force outward. Katon, fire cannons, blast of fire came out of the dome and hit dispelled more clones. Because of the wind, the fire cannons be became stronger and bigger. The twins then decided to go on the offensive. Miho began to twirl her fans and made flickering motions. Hyoton, fan bullets. Simultaneously, Mio made an X formation with his stone force and thrusted those outwards. Anton, tonfa bullets. Hundreds of ice and fire bullets melted and plated the clones, dispelling the remaining half. The twin decided to finish off their battle by giving going back to back and crossing their arms, they held it outwards and made spheral motion with their weapons. At first a ball of compressed wind covered the two of them, then came out four dragons, two of them made of ice and the other two of fire. The dragons made a protective circle on the sphere while also lashing out like a whip. The clones then began to scatter and prepare to defend themselves. The spear caused the twin to hover above the ground for three inches. Then they called out their technique, collaboration technique, dance of the ice and fire dragons. With the name of the jutsu called the ball of spear with them inside came at the clones and destroyed them. The jutsu was based on the Yondam Sokage's Rasengan. The twins upgraded it by adding their chakra affinities. With them inside the huge compressed sphere of wind, they destroyed everything in their path. With the dragons burning their enemies and fire and dice. The whole class watched in amazement as the sphere quickly bound, bounded at one after another clone, completely destroying them. Half of the clones that got hit because soiled status and the other exploded afterwards. The other half that got hit by the flames were incinerated into ash. When the jutsu died out, the twins returned to the middle and bowed. The class stood up, clapping, very amazed with the dance they just watched. That was amazing, Nei-chan, Nisan. Naruto called to his siblings, while his eyes shined with admiration. Thank you, Naruto-kun. Thank you, everyone, Kyoki-sensei. Thank you for having us. Here to demonstrate, the twins both said before they went to the side. Kyoki then called out for other chunis to show their katas and their techniques. After the demonstration, the whole class was now very excited to get their hands on their own weapons. Most of them while watching already got an idea which weapons they make as their primary. Taijutsu class. The grade 1 students sat in the field waiting for their senses to begin. The sensei was actually but old but only looked like he was in his 30s. He was wearing red plated samurai armor and carried an odachi on his back. He was huge and had a warrior belt. His middle length hair was tied in a ponytail and the tattoo of an Uzumaki clan was visible on his back. Good afternoon class, I am Uzumaki Case. I will be your sensei in Taijutsu. A little information about myself. I am a western samurai and fought back during the warring era. I cannot use chakra during my younger years, but thanks to the powers of the Rinnegan, I was 
I was finally able to unlock it when I turned 21. Even though I have unlocked my chakra system now, I usually use it only for taijutsu as I have mastered it when I was only a tuning. I have also mastered using the 8 inner gates up to its maximum level without dying. If you wish to become a taijutsu master, feel free to approach me. I gladly help help you and make you as my apprentice. Rokli listened to Case with rapt attention. His respect for his new sensei just doubled. Knowing that he could not use chakra before, Lee decided that he become a taijutsu master. With his chakra unlocked, his taijutsu will become more powerful tenfold. He was interested about the inner gates as well. He still had no idea about it, but he felt like it will be a good for him to learn in the future. Since you have your PE every morning, it is now my duty to level some things up," Kazi said while he smiled sadistically, making his students gulp. He took out several scrolls from his pocket and laid them on the floor. He performed a single-handed seal and then there was a poof of smoke. When the smoke cleared, the students had to cover their eyes as the things the scroll produced reflected the sunlight. Sensei, what are these? One of the students asked. Kaze smiled and pointed at the metallic things. These are baits. Now that you are students of the Uzukishiogaku Academy, you will now wear these every day until you graduate. Let me explain how these things work. When you are not wearing them, they are silver and are shiny. When you put them on, they blend in with the clothing you're wearing. There are seven levels. The first one is white. The weight will vary on your body weight. White is two times your weight. Once you've gotten used to the weight, it will automatically adjust to the second one. The second level is yellow, which is four times the weight. Next is green, eight times the weight that already exists. Next is blue, 16 times the weight. Next is purple, 32 times the weight. Next is red, 64 times the weight. The last is black, which is 128 times of the weight. Now, if you think that's easy, it's not. You're going to have a set, two of your legs, two of your arms and one for your body. So that's going to be five times more the weight. He said as he clapped happily and began handing each of the students a set. After staggering and trying to stand up, the students were now ready to begin with the training. Look at all you, so cute. You'll become cute little murderers in no times. Now, I want you to make 50 laps, 200 repetitions of push-ups, punches, kicks, pull-ups and crutches. And then we'll spar later so I could see and rate your strength and weaknesses. Now get going my cute students. Kaze shouted. Before Naruto was brought back to Uzu, Kaze used to lead a team of Storm. When he heard of the lost meal Storm going to the academy, he asked Kaede to leave his Storm duties so he could teach Naruto and his batch to be strong. Kaede is a very kind and gentle person to the people he cares for. He can be very strict at times and would hit people younger than him in the head with the flat of his plate. Every time he sees them not acting good, he's a very good disciplinary person due to him being the former samurai and fighting in his past war. He watched as his students struggled running and decided to join them with this training. After the session, Kaze gathered his student and gave them an assignment. Your assignment is simple. Do not remove your weights. That's all. Dismissed. Wednesday. Chakra Manipulation Good afternoon class, I am Uzumaki Raiza. I will be your sensei in chakra manipulation and also a wind ma and elemental manipulation later. Now please stand here in front and introduce yourselves. After the introduction, Raiza spoke again. As you have learned already how to meditate and gather chakra on your Monday subject, we will now begin with the basic chakra manipulation skills. For now, we will be doing chakra exercises. What is chakra exercise? It is an activity we do to improve our chakra control. The higher control we have, the lower the chakra. It will require you to perform jutsu or any chakra based movement. Chakra exercises also increase our chakra flow. We'll begin with the basic chakra exercises. She motioned for the class to watch her closely. She then began to walk towards the tree instead of crashing onto it. She simply walked vertically up the tree and then horizontally, standing upside down when she reached the topmost branch. This is tree walking exercise. How you do it is simple. You just focus your chakra onto the bottom of your feet and start walking. Remember, too much chakra, you will cause the tree to explode and make you fall. Two less chakra and you will fall and won't attach to your tree. Once you master the tree exercise, you begin water walking. Water walking is difficult and different from tree walking. You are required to pump chakra on your feet constantly as the water is not as stable and is flowing freely. 
fail to do so and you will sink. Once you master the tree and watch her walking, you will be doing this. Razor said as she hopped down the ground and picked up a dozen leaves and placed on her forehead. The leaf hovered a few centimeters and began spitting. When you master this, you add another leaf. She placed as she placed on the tip of her nose and made it spin as well. After that, you add more to wherever part of your body you like. Reza then held out her hand and hand each of the leaves spin on each of her tips of fingers. She did the same to her other hand. She stretched out her left foot and also had a leaf spin on her toes. There anyways, this will be a bit advanced. Our main goal is for you to master the tree walking and water walking exercises as soon as possible because when you're done, you will be doing the leaf balancing while the tree walking and water walking. Once you're mastered the leaf balancing, you change in the leaf the another thing that is heavier: sand bonds, kunai, throwing stars, combat knives, swords, and anything you could think of. When you reach a higher level in the academy, you will be sparring and dodging attacks while performing these chakra exercises. Now, let's just get started. Please find yourself a tree and begin walking, Reza said as she activated the training ground seal and changed the landscape to a forest from an open area. Elemental manipulation. Since you are all bending your chakra pools, still require chakra training. I will be only teaching you sunshine or body flicker and kavirami and the substitution technique. If you get the grasp of these techniques in two hours, we will begin the basic elemental jutsu after the fireball, wind twister, lightning spark, earth smash, and water burst. Reza told the class and smiled to herself, noticing her student's determined look on her face. Good, you are ready? Let's us begin practicing performing the hand seals. Two hours later, the class was once again gathered around their senses. Well done. I want you to keep on practicing doing the substitution and the sunshine up to the level where you won't need to do the seals. Once you master the two, I'll teach you how to add chakra manipulations to your substitution and sunshines. There are five types of elements, them being fire, wind, lightning, earth and water in respective order. Fire is the strongest against wind, but at the same time it is weaker against water. Wind is stronger against lightning but is weak against fire and so on. Each element has an advantage over another and is weak to another. Reza took out a scroll from her pocket and from it came out the sheets of paper. These are chakra papers. They react to which main chakra affinity you have. You simply focus your chakra on the sheets. If it wrinkles, you have lightning. If it tears in half, you have wind. Burn if you fire. Get soggy if you have water. And crumble if you have earth. The sensei handed them on one chakra paper each and ordered them to focus their chakra in it. Shion paper wrinkled, meaning she had lightning affinity, while Hinata's paper got soggy, wet, meaning she had the affinity for water. The Sabuka siblings were all wind, as they came from the Suna. With Gara being the Ichibis in Churiki, his paper crumbled after splitting, meaning he also had the earth release. Sasuke paper burned on one side and crumpled on the other side, meaning he had fire and lightning. Karin's main affinity was water, Lee's was wind, while Yakumo had fire. Fu surprised everyone when she had three results. Her paper split in two, with one getting wet on half and the other half getting crumbling. The rest of the other class either had one or main two affinities. Naruto got the class and her senses whole attention when he channeled his chakra onto his paper. This was the strongest gust of wind around the Naruto as his paper split into fours. One burst into flames and turned into tiny, shiny black powder. The other one became very crumbled. The other got soaking wet, and the last one crumbled into fresh brown soil. Wow, was the only thing everyone could say and think of. Everyone there sensei was speechless. Hmm, it appears that you have the Kekai Yontota. Your strong affinity is fire. It is something I could understand of you as having me inside of. If you fire jutsus are stronger than normal, then you probably have the Kekai Gotota, meaning you have all five elements as your main affinity. My fire simply made your stronger. I am, if I am correct with my theory, then you will be able to produce hellfire due to my fire Firefox added to your already stronger fire affinity. Kurama informed Naruto, Kekai Yota and Gotota, what is this? Asked the boy. Yes, there are four ones, being Kekai K 
Genkai, the lowest a combination of a person two main affinity has. The Kekai Santota speaks the name for itself. It is a combination of three different natures, transformations. There are two known persons who have this. Mu, the second Suchikage and Oniki of the both skills. The third Suchikage, their Kake Genkai Santota is a combination of fire, wind and earth with the results of the dust release or Jinton particle release. The Kekai Yontota is a combination of four while the Kekai Gontota is five. Your uncle Rokido is a Kekai Yontota alro. So I'm sure it is well kept secret. Only the Uzumaki clan knows about it. I sense it from him. The first time you met him. Since I'm a demon, I would know. You already know how humans acquire a bloodline limit, right? Anyway, the Kekenkai Gotota, however, had one. And the first sage of the sixth path. Uh, and that was the first sage of the sixth path. Your ancestor and my father, Hagromo or Suzuki, who had Kekai Gotota. You are the second person I knew who has it, Kurama explained. Wow, Narada thought. You have the Kekai Gotota, Reza remarked. She then explained to her students the same thing Kurama told Naruto just now. If they were amazed with Fu having three, everyone was now looking at Naruto with in a new light. They were now more astonished with the boy. This boy is full of surprises. Most people would think that this is the god. Way of compensating for his awful life in Konoha. Raisa thought. On a happy note though, I can teach him every jutsu I know. Kushina Sensei will be delighted when she hears this. Recovering from her shock, the teacher spoke again. Alright, now that you know your that now that you know about your affinities, I will be showing you the basic jutsu for your representative affinity. She said as she made shadow clones. Follow one of each and they will teach you your jutsu. The original Raisa approached Naruto and began to teach him all five elemental basic jutsus. When it was time for the class to dismiss, Raisa gathered her students once more. Good job everyone. I will see you next week. For your assignment, I want you to keep on practicing performing hand seals. Here is a hint. Perform all 12 hand seals consecutively according to the path and pattern I show. Stay with the pace where you won't make a mistake and increase the pace when you are no longer committing errors with the current pace dismissed. Hi, thank you sensei, the class chores. Thursday, summoning class. Good morning class, I am Uzumaki Chihoro. I will be your sensei in summoning. What we're going to do is the subject is, well, we'll practice fighting alongside our summons. Do not worry, I will be helping you supply for the required chakra to summon your partner. Once you have summoned your partners, you will introduce yourself to the class. Some of the class was Uzumaki's, only a few required assistance. Once they had their summon, their partners introduced themselves, they began with their training. Naruto once again got his class stunned when he summoned Watatatsume, the king of dragons. Even Chihoro had his jaw on the floor as he did not expect this. Uh, I guess I overdid it. Naruto mumbled, scratching his head. He was standing on top of the dragon's head. Yes, you did. The dragon chuckled. Try summoning a regular dragon. We will be doing our training together back in Terra every weekend. As time is different from here in there. What Tatsumi said as he looked around and found members of his clan with their partners quickly understanding the situation. Right, I'll see you again later in the week. Do well in your training, Naruto. Goodbye. The Dragon King said as he moved back to Terra. Naruto then focused less chakra and summoned another dragon. He was able to summon Akira this time. I've heard about the kid having a Kekai Go Gototai. This one. Hmm. Him being the summoner of Watatatsumi Sama really is full of surprises. I'll do my best to teach him everything I know. Jihoro thought as he observed Naruto's newly summoned dragon. He was able to summon one of the dragon's clan's general after summoning their king. <laughs> and yet he's still standing like it was nothing. Amazing. The student's current objective was mastering the fighting style of their sem summons. Once they were mastered, they will be sparring alongside them and against them. In the coming years, they will be practicing, performing, collaborating techniques with their summons. Kenjutsu class, welcome to the dance class. You already know me, so I will keep the introduction and get on with the class right away, Kira told her students. Watching closely since I will be doing the katas five times only. I want you to memorize the movements quickly. This should be easy for you, as this is only the basic of the most basics. She then summoned her swords from her seals and demonstrated the katas for the academy style. 
Always remember, this word is an extension of your arm, is a part of your body. When you dance, you move your whole body, and that includes the sword. You murder your enemies gracefully and flawlessly. If you grip on your sword, it's too tight. It is the same thing as you have a numb arm when you fight. Grip it too loose, then you lose your arm. The sword is a part of your body. You need to maintain balance in order to move well. Now, let us begin. You will be handing and handling your real swords now and not the wooden ones because wooden swords are for babies. You soon will be ninjas and you need to feel the real deal. Now go pick up your sword quickly. Do not choose. The sword will be the one to pick you. Just take one and get back to your formation. Once the students have gotten their swords, they stood in a loose formation. So they will not hit each other. Good. Now have both your palms sliced and smear the blood on the flat sides of the blade. Do not worry, you will heal quickly. Once you are done smearing the blood, hold the sword and position yourself with the basic stance. Make sure you do not proper, you do the proper position and posture for the sword. Follow my lead. The students then did as they told and wise their senses. The stance was simple. The right foot was ahead of the body forward while the left foot was at the back. The distance between one foot the arm lowered holding the sword with its tip raised on the 20 degree angle. Good. Now channel your chakra towards the sword. The students then concentrated and channeled their chakra to the blade. They were surprised when the whole sword began to change form. Kira then began to explain. These swords you holding have been applied with seals. When you smeared your blood on it, you signed the contract. When you channel your chakra on it, you activated the contract. It took your body measurements and weights and changed from the suit your style. You will notice that the balance weight and grip are now perfect unlike earlier. You will feel now more comfortable holding it due to the seal adjustment the sword did for you. Some of you had short swords, normal length swords, long swords, broad swords and even split between the two or dual wielding swords. The swords are now yours. Those are my gift for you. You will be using these swords for about a month until you have your own swords or set of swords forged. Just show these current swords to the smith so they could get the necessary measurements. For the month, we will practice with the basic thrust, slashes, swings, stabs, and other movements. After the class, Naruto approached his sensei and asked about a certain sword fighting style. Yes, Naruto? Sensei, there is a style I want to try. I'll be requiring two more sets. Can I have two more of the sets? Hmm, so you want six swords in total? Kira asked as she eyed her students for a spare. Yes, alright then. She smiled, patting the boy's head. Naruto smiled and took two swords that did not have a contract yet. He did the same thing earlier and once he finished the ritual, he had six swords in total. Like a demonstration of the style you're talking about. Hi. Kira then activated the seal on the dojo and 30 dummies ap appeared on the ground. Whenever you're ready to begin, Naruto nodded and threw his swords in the air. He caught one in the mouth, the blade on his right side. He caught another with his right hand, holding it in a back hold with his arm forward on a 45 degree angle, meaning the blade also facing the right side. He caught the third with his left hand in a back hold as well in a 45 degree angle. The fourth blade was caught between his left leg and hip held near his waist. Facing the outside left, he was in a slight crouching position with his left knee raised. The fifth sword held behind it, also facing the felt left outside. The last sword was placed besides his right knee, facing the right outside. Kira's eyes fluttered as she had never seen or read about the stance Naruto was doing. She watched closely as the boy nodded to her and began attacking the dummies. Unnoticed by Naruto, all of his classmates have stayed behind when they heard him talk to their sensei and got curious, so they decided to watch the lost maelstrom. Naruto attacked the dummies with random strikes. He was spinning to the left, right, upwards and downwards, while also kicking the dummies to his lift him to the air or simply give him a speed boost as he hit another dummy that was nearby kira tried to read his moves but could not make a pattern as the dance moves were completely random in less than two minutes all dummies have been sliced off sensei i would like to test with attacks dummies naruto said with his sword still on his mouth kira nodded and cleared 
the destroyed dummies and placed them with the moving dummies. The dummies were now wielding wooden swords and were making attack motions. She then nodded to Naruto and to start. Naruto did the same thing he did earlier with the unmoving dummies. Kira noticed that the boy random movements also allow him to defend himself at all sides with his attack and parried the dummies in about 40 4 minutes and 30 seconds, all the dummies were annihilated. The sensei was making calculation in her mind and figured that once Naruto had mastered the style, he could spin, move around faster and destroy more dummies in a short time. She snapped out of her revere when Naruto once again threw the sword in the air and Chris fully caught all six. That was impressive. Where did you learn that? I've never seen that style before. Kira asked. Naruto's classmates, whom he noticed now, were also gaping at him and were curious at to where he had learned this style. He simply shrugged and answered his sensei honestly. Actually, sensei, I just thought of that style earlier when we were practicing with Kartas. I wondered to myself what if the movements were totally random. So I decided a style and main stance for it. When the class ended, I finally completed it in mind on how to do it. And so I asked you, so you're saying... You just made up their style today and while we were doing our lessons. Yes, Sensei. Naruto replied. He shifted uncomfortably under his sense's piercing gaze. How long have you been dancing with a sword? I just held my first sword today. I've been reading scrolls of some katas and stances, but today is the first time I actually got my hands on the sword. Hira could not help but show her excitement as she kept on muttering that her genius, amazing and totally unpredictable. Suddenly she grabbed the boy into a hug. Come here, you, she said as she squeezed the boy's head against her chest. Oh, you little genius, you. She then released the boy and kneeled in front of him, holding his shoulders. So do you have a name for it? I just thought of a name. The Dance of the Six Deaths, Naruto said as he made an I got it pause. Kira clapped happily and half-tracked and carried the boy outside the dojo. Class dismissed, shouted not, looking back at her students, who were still awestruck. Sensei, where are we going? We're going to see the Uzukake and show it to your family. I'm sure they will be proud since you invented this style. It will be placed on your logbook under your achievements. Unknown to Naruto, his two twin siblings were still taking pictures and videos of him for his album. Miho and Mio were very impressed and could not wait to inform their parents and older siblings. They followed Kira and Naruto realized they were also headed to the Uzukage's office. Uzukage's office. Uzukage-sama. Kushina and Minato looked up on the room that door burst open from and Kira along with Naruto came barging in. They noticed that the Kanjutsu teacher was very excited. Sensei, it's Naruto. He, Kira said as she dragged the boy in front of her parents and began squeezing him into a hug. She then released the boy and patted his head. Kushina and Minato could not help but smile as they watched Kira look very thrilled. He just created his own kinjutsu style. She half shouted. She then activated her Rinnegan and showed them the memory. After watching, Kushina grabbed her son and smothered him into a hug. Minato was smiling wide and ruffling his son's hair. That was very impressive, Naruto-kun. We are both proud of you, they both said. Naruto was just speechless as he blushed to his parents' praise. Kushina could not keep her excitement and wait for the dinner, so she called for Kaede, Arashi, Tsunade, Sna Minako, Narumi, Miho, and Mio to the office and asked Kira to show them the memory. After a lot of the praising and congratulations, Kushina finally took a scroll and began sealing and writing down the information about the technique and drew the name Main Stance Tall. The scroll was labeled The Dance of the Six Deaths by Uzumaki Namekaze Naruto, The Lost Meals Drum. Kushina told her son that she will be the one to personally train him in Kenjutsu like she taught her siblings. Now, go back to the mansion and get some rest. We're having a celebration dinner tonight. Kushina informed her son that boy then kissed her parents and grandmother before leaving the place. A day before, we found out that he had the Kekai Gotato. Arashi started. And now this, he just created his own style at the age of 5, who knows, he probably has the Mokiton as well, Kaede half choked making the others laugh, oh yes, who knows indeed, the boy is full of surprises, Sonata said, indeed, so what are we having for dinner, Minato asked, aside from ramen, what else, Arashi interrupted, knowing that her daughter would undoubtedly say ramen, just, let's just order for a huge feast from the golden whirlpool dragon and have the food delivered to the mansion. We'll let them handle the cho cho choice of the food, Kushina said. Of course, I'm also ordering huge balls of ramen from Ichirakus. I'm thinking of inviting them as well as Naruto's friend. Kaede then took out a notepad and began scribbling on it. What are you writing? Kushina asked her brother curiously. Oh, 
chesty materials for Naruto sword. I'm having a squad look for the rare materials for different countries. It will be perfect gift for him on his birthday. I was thinking of the same thing. If we show the memory to Mei Nechan and Rikodo, they'll surely think of giving him a sword as gift as well. Yes, we could chip in the money required for the materials, Arashi said. Minato then peered over to Kaida's notes. This will be expensive though, he noted. It doesn't matter, it's for Naruto chans birthday gift, Kushina said. The rarest alchemy materials from the land of snow, fire, water, lightning, earth and wind. These are cost 15 to 20 million yen, depending it we get discount. It's a good thing that diamonds of the land of materials and metals agreed to our proposed alliance or get the purest, strongest and lightest material alloy from them. The land still owe us a great amount. We can have the other materials for free, Arashi said. We'll strengthen the sword even further with seals once they're forged, it's not a finished. Finally coming to an agreement, they sent six squads to go to the said six countries look for the rest element materials needed to make Nardo his swords. Nardo's uh, swords, elemental affinities will be ice, fire, water, wind, lightning and earth. They also sent a letter to Mei in Kiri and the land of metals daimyo informing them that the sword will be naruto's birthday party's gift kushina also sealed a video copy of the memory into the scroll to show mei naruto's invented style the night the family had celebrated for naruto's newly achievement all of naruto's friends have been invited the subuka siblings hinata sasuke lee yakumo fu shion and the british miroko karin and even tayuya were present orichimaru team dosu and the sound four were also present and lastly of course i have tenuichi were there the next day, Friday, Uzushio Academy, Medical Ninjutsu Class, Grade 1. The morning in their PE class, Naruto was approached by all of the classmates They congratulated him for his achievement. Even their sensei, Case, approached Naruto to congratulate him personally and offered his assistance for Kenjutsu training, should he require it. Even though the boy and mother was a master in Kenjutsu, he could still teach him a way of samurai. When the time of their medical ninjutsu class started, their sensei was excited to see Naruto, of course. The teacher for this subject was Tsunade, uh, Tsunade's apprentice Shizune, Naruto's grandmother, most likely informed her. She also congratulated the boy before getting started with the lesson. Alright, good morning everyone, I'm Kare Shizuno, apprentice of the medical sanin, Tsunade Senju. I will be your sensei for this subject until you grade 3. Please stand in the middle and introduce yourself. After the introduction, Shizune went on lecture mode. Medical knowledge is yada 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 yada. I'm not going to explain this because this is so long and I'm getting tired of these explanations. After the whole lecture, Shizune then took out a huge chart and began explaining for human structure and showed them samples and vitals for and vials of basic poisons and antidotes for them. Kenjutsu class. Same went for the same Kenjutsu class and they were taught illusions how to cast them and Naruto was bad at this, much to the surprise of everyone because of his Jinchuriki status but he could still displace, dispel the highest of level of Kenjutsu. One week later, Naruto and his friends were currently eating at Ichiraku's ramens and were conveying, conversing with Ayame. They finished their Kenjutsu class and were dismissed three hours ago after eating and some talking, the others excused themselves to go home and rest until it was only Naruto in the restaurant. He continued talking with the chef's daughter. In fact, he started to develop a crush on Ayame. Unlike most people, she treated him as himself and not as the lost maelstrom. They both enjoyed each other's company. When it was time for the boy to go, Ayame gave him a takeout bowl for ramen. Naruto thanked her and his dad walked back to the mansion. It was already hours past nightfall. It was already dark. Most shops were now starting to close. I'm bored. I don't want to go home yet. I want to do something fun, Naruto thought. Why don't you try sneaking inside your mother's office and take something? You know, they'll find out about it and we'll have the Storm and Jonins look for you. It will be good for you to test your stealth skills. Grandma suggested she too was bored and wanted some action, so she decided that it would be best for her host to, to do some kind of training. She knew Naruto loved training. <laughs> that sounds fun. Naruto agreed he then tried to mask his presence and went to the Uzukage's office. When they got there, the two were surprised to find the office empty. Maybe they went on a meeting, Naruto thought, and searched around the office for something. He checked the cabinets and a used scroll was found. What's this? The scroll of ceiling from Konoha. It is only a copy, but it would not hurt taking it. You could learn a thing or two from that. 
Take the scroll, Kurama said. Naruto nodded and took off a scroll. He went to the forest to hide while he waited for his mother to find out and send people after him. He ate the bowl of ramen. I am especially made for him, especially after that he opened the scroll. Hmm, what's to learn? What to learn? Shadow clone jutsu, multiple shadow clone technique. I wonder, Naruto read, shadow clone jutsu, a jutsu developed by Okage Senju Tobirama. The jutsu allows to create solid copies, unlike the basic clone technique. The jutsu is corporal and not an illusion. The clones can also perform jutsu and the shadow clone jutsu to create more copies of itself. It can also bleed, but will usually disperse for getting hit by a stronger force. The clone can also dispel on their own or by the original clone, can also feel the emotions of the original and have a mental link between them, allowing the original to relay information to the clones even at distance. When the clone dispels, the memory of the clone are transferred to the original and the other clones as well. Goes the same. The Jutsu was specially made for Uzumaki clan members due to their high chakras. If they cannot produce simple clones, the Jutsu is considered a B-ranking Jutsu and is dangerous for the known Uzumaki or those who have low chakra reserves. Lastly, Shadow Clones cannot be distinguished from the original even by the Sharingan, Byakugan or even the Rinnegan. Naruto then noticed a note at the bottom part. He figured it out was written by someone. Note, Shadow Clone memories and experience are transferred to the original when dispelled. Perfect. Time to learn this. An hour after Naruto had finally mastered the Shadow Clone technique and the multiple Shadow Clone technique, he was immediately on the alert when he sensed people. Naruto recently found out that he was a sensor. He asked Kurama about it and the fox told him that the ability did not come from her, meaning he was really born with sensory abilities. <laughs> when Kurama ability to detect negative emotions, he used its advantage to detect people and especially enemies faster. Finally, they're here, the boy said and then started to run towards the search's position. Hey naruto you're going the wrong way. What are you doing? Naruto did not respond and simply smirked. He ran straight for the large group of storm operatives with another big group of chonis. He figured out that they were just receiving their orders and he was right. Just before they scattered, Naruto appeared in front of them. Immediately, the boy was surrounded. Please surrender the scroll and come with us to the office. The leader said, hey, hey, hey. Naruto chuckled and made a hand sign. Tajikageban Shin no Jutsu. Thousands of Naruto clones appeared and scattered in all different directions. And there goes your stealth training, Krama sighed. Oh shit, the leader muttered, finally understanding what was going on. Not again, crowned the others as they too understood. Those who were new storm members gave confused looks. It's kind of tradition for the Uzukage's children. I'll explain later. For now, we need to find him first. And fast, the leader said. Before taking off, the others just sighed and chased after the clones to look for the original. Meanwhile, the original Naruto sunshed back to the Uzukage's office and returned the scroll. Then in sunshed to the mansion and hid in his room. Kurama was howling in laughter while Naruto tried to remain silent. He muffled his laughter with a pillow and later fell asleep. Uzukage's mansion balcony. Arashi, Tsunade, Kaede, Minato, Kushina and Naruto's siblings were all watching at the balcony. Arashi and the others were on the ground laughing out loud. Did you see that? What he did, exclaimed the old man between his fits of laughter. Oh, that was the best going right in front of them and then creating thousands of clones. <laughs> Sonari laughed. The Zukage and the other members of the family actually knew what Naruto, Naruto was doing and sneaking into his office and taking the scroll. As Miroku informed them earlier, Arashi remembered the time when he was still Uzukake and the same thing happened to his children. In different times, Kushina, Kaede and even Mei also sneaked in office and took the scroll of sealing. He simply let them do it to improve their stealth skills. When he was a child, he did the same thing when his mother was the Uzukake. Kushina let this same thing happen to her other children although this was the first time her child showed up in front of everyone and did the multiple shadow clone before returning the scroll back to office and then hiding in the mansion. Oh this is going to be a long night for my man, Kaede said between a coughs of laughter. Huh, sure it is. Time to make bets, Minato said. Let's say if Naruto kun can beat my record, I still have the longest time before getting caught. After all, 7 hours and 10 minutes, Kushina barracked. The family then made bets that the winner gets treated to ramen for a week for free. The next morning, Naruto woke up feeling great. Although he was starving, mastering and creating 3,000 clones had very taxing 
uh, exhaustion on your body. He was lucky to have felt the fatigue when he got to the bed. He then went out of his room and looked for his family. He sent them all gathered in the balcony. When he reached the balcony, he looked, he wondered and looked around why they looked like they set the three camping for the night. They were sleeping there. Kha chan, Tho chan, what's going on? Narada asked. Waking them up, oh, it's you, Narada chan. Kushna said, a bit sleepy, what's going on? Before anyone could answer, the leader for Narada stretched up appeared in a water session to report Khaira Sama we still haven't found him we estimated the clones number to 10,000 we the storm stopped finally noticing Naruto who was still confused the storm quickly tapped his restriction seal on the boy's forehead and waited for it to dispel when it remained he realized it was a real Naruto ah I finally found you by the orders of the Uzukage, you are to come with me to the Uzukage's office and return what you have taken what is he talking about Naruto thought for a moment then he remembered it and could not help but laugh. <laughs> but the scroll has been returned back to where it was overnight. I returned it, right? After I produced the clones. What? What? The storm half sh- asked, half shouted. Then he face palmed himself and started laughing. Finally. Caught up, huh? Kaira said as he too was laughing. The whole family was laughing. Call of the search. You will all receive a D rank payment for this. Kushina said between giggles. Hi, Uzukage sama. Thank you. He bowed and. With a slumped shoulders, he left to gather the others. Wow, so they were looking for me for the whole night until the morning, Nard asked. Yes, they all replied. Wow. Yeah, the siblings of Naruto said as everyone laughed. Well, Naruto, well done, Arashi said, petting his grandson. Ten hours and ten minutes. And that was because he wasn't aware they were still looking for him. The search would have gone longer if he didn't come in time to report, Kaide said, reminding the others. Wow, just so you know. There are still about 2,700 clones remaining. Not away from the others as he sensed his clones. Most of them were hiding while the others were running away from storm. He mentally ordered them to dispel one by one every one minute. What? Kushna opened her mouth realizing what she did. I lost to Narada-kun? My baby beat my record? She wailed, also feeling proud. Now, now, time for breakfast. Let's go back to the house. Sonare said, motioning for everyone to take to the living room and talk there while they go dining there. Time skip about two years later. After the incident, Naruto used his Shadow Clones to his advantages to speed up his training. His family told him to keep the special use of the Shadow Clones to a secret. So he did as he was told. His chakra reserves have grown larger and still continue to build up. Thanks to his lessons in the academy, he also had more control in chakra now. His grandmother Tsunade gave him chakra control lessons during the weekend while his mother Kira and Kaze helped him with Kenjutsu. Minato, Minako and Narumi helped him with elemental manipulation. Although he was immune to Kenjutsu, his aunt Natsuki still tortured him on the subject every weekend and told him to invent his own genjutsu techniques. Mio and Miho helped him with the other subjects as well as the weapons master. Aside from the six sword style, he had chosen to bow staff as his secondary weapon. Naruto received the elemental swords in his sixth birthday party. The first sword was a gift from his aunt Mei and uncle Rikoto. The ice sword was a gift from his four siblings. The wind sword was a gift from his father, and the water sword was from his mother. The earth sword was from Tsunade, and the lightning sword was from Arashi. He still hasn't decided names for the swords. He got his elemental bow from his aunt Natsuki as a birthday present and named it Stunner. About three months after they started the academy, Sasuke finally awoke his Sharingan due to the heavy training they have been. Toby taught him about the Sharingan and their clan's family jutsu during the weekends. Rock Lee, on the other hand, had chosen to become a Taijutsu master. He was apprenticed to the veteran samurai Kaze and received whole day lessons every Saturday. For the weapons of choice, he had the nunchucks. He also taught by Tsunari every Friday afternoon the same techniques she uses to enhance her physical attack. Since Lee will be using mainly Taijutsu, it will be a great idea to combine monstrous strength to it. Kurama Yakumo was taught by Natsuki in Genjutsu. She made a great progress within two years. She was also able to invent two of her own genjutsu, the burning coffin burial and the poison IV entanglement. Her jutsu have been added to her achievements record and got the first jutsu classified as an A rank while the second one being a B rank. Several months after getting his seal fixed, Gara finally managed to make some friends with Shukaku. The one-tailed beast helped him and his siblings train 
taught them the Suna long forgotten techniques, the one that were used before the first Shinobi War. Fu's friendship with Chome also got stronger. The Seven Tailed Demon taught her Jutsu from her old village, Takigakura, and started training the girl using demonic chakra. In Konoha, Neji was made the new Yuga here after her Hanabi's kidnapping. Unknown to them, the girl was brought back to the Uzushio Gakure and got reunited with her sister, Hinata, and their mother, Hitomi. Their mother had them use the name Uzumaki as it was their birthright, birthright and was no longer affiliated with the Yugas. Hitomi was brought back to life with the use of the Shinigami's mask. Nine months after Sunata's recovery, Hinata Hanabi receiving training with their Byakugans from their mother. Shion was also doing great in her training. Naruto found an interesting way to counter the girl's saying of all people's death. The boy suggested that he use a blood clone and had it die the same way she saw the person die in her vision. It proved effective when she saw Hanabi's death when she was being taken from Konoha. After that incident, kids their age no longer feared Shion and her vision. The girl had more friends. Moroku and Shion were very thankful for Naruto for his ingenious idea, making Shion's crush and respect for the boy increase. Karin receiving training from Narumi and sometimes Kushina, they found out that she too possessed a strong ability of Uzumaki Chakra chains. They also found out that she was a strong sensor. Karin also received apprenticeship to Tsunade in medical ninjutsu. Lesnis Tayuga finally opened up to the group and became friends with Naruto and his friends. Although there were times she acted irate whenever girls found over Naruto, Tayuga also established a good relationship with the sound students due to her love playing the flute and using ninjutsu with it. The same was for the kin uses her belts tied onto the sandbox. Minako and Narumi formally took their seats as the Uzukages in New Uzu. The island was now surrounded by strong whirlpools, as was covered by thousands of seal included demon restriction seals. The people living there started learning the shinobi arts and receiving the new technologies from the mainland Uzushio Gakure. Otogakure also finished its construction and finally became considered a minor village. With its secret alliance with Suna and Uzu, Oto continued to steadily grow stronger. In the land of rain, the Karski finally managed to defeat Hanzo and his followers. Within the two months after their arrival, they quickly managed to recruit more people in their cause and found the most rebels there. More than 90% of Ame sided with the Akatsuki and wanted the current leader of close rebellion. They finally came into the open and fought the leader and their followers. All of those who opposed Akatsuki had been mercilessly killed, with Nagato being the new leader. He had city rebuilt and got it looming within three months. With the help of Yahiko and Conan, all of the Amekakure were now sworn into secrecy and were very loyal to their new leader. Three more months later, the Land of Rain had changed of name. Ame was now called as the Ni Uzu Third City. For the outsider, they still thought that the place was called the Amegakure. The third city was heavily protected by seals. No spy was able to enter the village. Whenever they tried, they simply exploded into blood and gore as they neared the village borders. Uzukage's mansion back in Uzushio Gakure. It was early in the morning and Naruto was still sleeping in the room. Today was his seventh birthday. He was awoken from his sleep when he hit his head on something hard. When he had turned, Naruto's eyes opened and followed himself in what looked like a small jungle. He rubbed his eyes and realized he was still in his room. He, His bed had been turned over and saw a huge tree trunk on its stead. He realized it was the hard thing he hit his head with. There were tree branches all over his room and veins crawling onto walls. Naruto was now starting to panic and tried to call out Kurama to ask her if he was under some kind of danger. So when he got no response, he lost it. He freaked out and tried to stand up, and but could not do so as there were three branches and veins. Kachan, Tochan! Naruto shouted in his high-pitched voice. He was very scared now. Kachan, Tochan, Bachan, Ojis-chan, anybody? No more than ten seconds later, the dome was blasted from its hinges and also destroyed the tree branches that it were near. The room instantly got filled with very strong killer intent as six Kage level shinobi breasted in followed by two squads of storm. More people coming later, Naruto's siblings coming into view behind the squads. What is this? Minako asked as he observed the room. Tree branches, Naruto muttered. I don't sense anyone's unfriendly. There's no sign of intruder. Arashi informed them. The old man was censored up and made a hundred kilometer scan. Naruto, what happened? Tsunade said. 
They tried to remove the branches. I, I don't know. I woke up when I hit my head on a tree trunk when I decided to contact Kurama and ask her if this was a so I got no response. Until now, I can't sense her. Narda said while he tried to stop crying. It's alright, Narda. You're safe now. I think everything is fine, she murmured. Kushina murmured as she confronted her son. She was the first to get near to the boy. I, I thought something bad happened. I thought Uzu got invaded. I, I thought I was the only one left. Naruto whispered, still crying. It's alright, Naruto. Nothing bad is going to happen to Uzu and to her people. Kachan promises you that. Kushina said as she kissed the boy's forehead to calm him down. But, but for Kurama, what can I do about her? I don't know even if she's there. Naruto said. He felt another pair of arms and saw his grandmother besides him. Naruto stared at the necklace Sonata was wearing as he noticed it was radiating something and was glowing green. Sonata noticed the boy staring and was surprised when she noticed it glow. Something flashed to Sonata's mind and immediately she removed the necklace and wore it to Naruto's neck. Naruto could channel your chakra and release you and relax. Just relax. We're safe now. We're here. Sonata remembered. The boy nodded and took a deep calming breath. He closed his eyes and tried to channel chakra. The necklace then started to glow green and blue and radiated a relaxing aura. After about 10 seconds, the small forest started to disappear. The tree branches and veins sunk down to the floor and soon vanished. The damage caused by the mini forest started to repair. When he opened his eyes, the room was back to normal. Sensed Rama's presence once again. Mokitan, Snarty whispered, you have the Mokitan. As this is where I'm going to be leaving off this part, guys. I hope you like this one. And if you do, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And this is Apollo Uchiha. And I'm signing out. Peace.